Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to discuss section 10.4 dealing with secants and tangents. Starting off, we're going to talk about a couple definitions, the first of which is a secant. A secant is a line or a segment that intersects the circle in two places. Over here on the left hand side, we have an example of a secant line, which would be line AB. And over here on the right, we have an example of a secant segment, which be, would be segment PR. And again, it hits in two places on the circle. The next example, um, we're gonna skip two for a minute and jump over to three. We're talking about a secant, but we're talking about the external part of the secant. So using our exact same example that we just had, yes, PR is our secant segment, but now we have the external portion, which would be PQ. So the external part of the secant segment. Again, that goes from the outside point to the intersection point of the circle. Our next definition, going back to number two here, is a tangent. A tangent can also be a line or a segment that intersects the circle at one point. So if we have an example of a line, it would hit at one point, and that point is what we call the point of tangency. That is very important because as you can see here, a tangent is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at that point of tangency. So if I have, again, AC is my tangent line. If I have my center point and I draw in my radius from that center point to that point of tangency, I know that that would form a right angle with that tangent line. Same idea if we're referring to, let's call this B, so it matches down here. So in our case here, so now I have AB is our tangent segment. So again, if I draw in the radius from the center to that point of tangency, we know it forms a right angle. Number four on your sheet is referring to a two tangent theorem called the ice cream cone theorem. I'm just gonna present this to you today and then we'll discuss in class tomorrow why this works. So if we have two tangent segments are drawn from the same external point, we'll call that point P. So I have one segment that's tangent and again another segment that is tangent to the circle there. So I have segment PX and PY. We know that PX would be congruent to PY because they come from the same external point. So PX, segment PX would be congruent to segment PY. Moving on to the examples here. Let's read a couple things here. Find the value of X for these six problems. We're assuming that C is the center as well as any segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. Okay, so if they appear to be tangent, we are assuming they are tangent. And the first problem here, we have the radius is 19. And again, recall that we also have another radius here, that vertical segment, that would be also 19. That looks like a 14, let me rewrite that. So now that we have one pair of disjoint sides congruent and we have three right angles, we do know that this is a square, therefore x would be 19. Very important you'll notice as we're going through these examples to highlight the radius of all the circles. Number two, again, we know that this is tangent where it appears to be tangent. So we have a right angle there between the sides of 15 and 20. This can be a little deceiving here. X is actually this arrow. There's a reason that arrow's on there. It's all the way from the center C all the way out to the end. So we have a triple right there. That's a three, four, five triangle. Therefore, we know the hypotenuse, which is X would be 25. Example three, this is our ice cream cone. 
Again, comes from the same external point, therefore we know our two tangent lines are congruent. Number four, again, appears to be our bottom line here, our horizontal line, appears to be tangent. So if we draw in the radius to that point of tangency, we've got a right angle. Again, really important to highlight our radius. We have the radius of 30. So you can see I'm highlighting there in green. Therefore, we know that vertical segment that we drew in, the radius, would also be 30. And then we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle and the hypotenuse would be 50, 30, 40, 50. So x plus 30 would be equal to 50. Therefore, x would be 20. Okay. Number five, again, appears to be tangent, so we can draw in our right angle there. Um, Again, pointing out the radius. 21 is our radius, therefore the portion from C to our circle is also 21. Therefore, the entire hypotenuse would be 21 plus the 8. And again, we have a triple. This is a triple that we're not as familiar with. So we'd have 21 squared plus x squared equals 29 squared. It is a triple, again, not one of those that I had you that we use frequently, but it is a triple. Six. So if we again we're assuming all four of these lines are tangent, so we know at the very top there from the radius we have a right angle. We can also draw that radius in going to the left, the tangent on the left hand side, so we have another right angle there, and we know that radius is 8, so we have one pair of disjoint sides congruent. We have three right angles, therefore we have a square, and that's going to be the same case in each portion over here. So all of these will be 8, therefore the larger figure would also be a square, so x would be 16. And last but not least, we have our walk around problem. This is what we call a walk around problem. So here we have a circle inside of a triangle and this can look, the walk around problems don't all look like this, but this is very similar. But what's important about this is if I highlight this circle and I'm also going to highlight segment EB, which is also a tangent segment, and EC, which is a tangent segment. They come from the same external point E, therefore we know EB is congruent to EC. And as we go around the circle, we also have two tangent segments in FB and FD. So again, they go to the same external point, as well as in the bottom right-hand corner, GD would be congruent to GC because we have three ice cream cones going around this triangle. Right. We're looking for the radius of the circle. We're given that it's a right triangle. Let's label some of the information here. We know that EG is 10. We also know that FE is 6 and FG is 8. At this point in time, we know our ice cream cone. We know all these different um, tangents are congruent, so we're just going to start and label one of the segments x. I'm going to start over here at FD, and I'm going to walk around. I'm going to walk around in one direction, so and I chose to go clockwise. I'm going to go all the way around this triangle until I get back to that x. So I know FD is congruent to FB, which would be X. Since we know that entire side FE is equal to 6, EB would be equal to 6 minus X, which is congruent to EC. And again, we know that entire side is 10. So when we label CG, we would have 10 minus 6 minus X. Now remember, 6 minus X is a binomial. So we would want to distribute through that negative. 
and we'd actually have 10 minus 6 plus x, which would result in 4 plus x. That is also equivalent to dg. And now we're all the way back to the beginning where we started with labeling segment FD as x. So where we start, where we started and where we ended, we're going to take those values. I'm going to take the x and the 4 plus x. We know that is equivalent to the entire side FG, which is 8. If we solve that, we get x equal to 2. Now let's go back and read our question here. Is that what we're looking for? Find the radius of the circle. Well, let's plug this x back in. So I'm going to take x equals 2. We're going to plug that in for FD. We'd also have that in for FB. Let's see if that um, we can actually make that x correlate to somewhere on our circle. If we draw in the radii AD and AB, we know we have a right angle at both of those points of tangency. So since we have three right angles, one pair of disjoint sides congruent, again, we have a square. So we know that the radius would be equivalent to 2. So this concludes section 10.4, part 1, notes.